Hello, in this video I'm going to give you an overview of the admin profile type or the admin portal for HMH Ed platform, which is the digital platform for the elementary HMH into reading for ELA, as well as the elementary science dimensions for science classes through K through six as well. So as an instructional coach or UDL facilitator or an elementary um, coach for the whole districts, I've set up admin profiles for you, which means that you have access to all of the teacher materials as well as some more helpful materials for your specific role. You'll have access to classes if you need to, to add yourself to a class if you're helping a teacher or working with the teacher, um, as well as some of the more data and reporting pieces for your entire building. So I've made you an administrator for your respective buildings. If you're at more than one building, you might see more of like a district level view, but if you're at one building, you should see just your school. So mine looks a little bit different here than what I'm about to dive in and explain to you because I have all of the buildings, but you should probably see just your school here, uh, maybe one or two listed depending on your role. All right, so just some things to know here about accessing this platform. Um, like I said on my little note sheet that I sent to you all, this can be accessed through any elementary teachers. It's learning courses. It doesn't matter which elementary it's learning course. They're all housed there on that BCSE curriculum resources page. But I also put a link to this directly because I know a lot of you don't have your own it's learning courses because you're not rostered in PowerSchool and that's all driven from there. So you could technically access this from this document that I shared with you and make it a bookmark on your page so that it's easier for you to find and to get to. And it'll prompt you to select a Google account when you sign in and then you should be good to go from there. You likely got an email as well to let you know that you've been added and an account has been created for you in the platform. So now that we're in here, you'll probably just see your school listed here. Uh, and you can click on that school and that's where you can dive in to see all the different classes, the teacher profiles that are there, and the students. But before I do that, I do have to give a couple of caveats to everything I'm going to explain and just a couple of do's and don'ts. Um, as you have access here, you have a little bit different access than a teacher. So with that power comes some responsibility. Um, we use an automated rostering system for all of our teachers and our classes and our students here in this HMH platform so it's as seamless as possible. So please do not go and try to edit anyone's account, whether that's editing a teacher's account or a student account. That can create significant issues whenever it tries to automate, which it does every single night. It syncs with PowerSchool between 5 and 7 p.m. That's going to cause some issues and create duplicate accounts, which could result in neither account working because it's the same one, um, basically just blocking each other out. So don't, don't edit and don't create any users, don't create teacher profiles or student profiles as well. So while it might be tempting to create an account for a student or a teacher who maybe is a new hire or new to the building, just wait until that evening between 5 to 7 p.m. and it will be created for them automatically and won't result in some of the headaches that happen if you kind of go in there and try to do it yourself. Other thing here, while it's tempting to have kind of like a a dummy or a fake student or fake teacher account, that also comes with a fee. We can do that in some of our other systems, but this one is not one of those systems where we can go and create fake accounts and use those for training purposes. That being because each and every one of those comes with a fee. Um, any teacher account comes with a pretty <laughs> exorbitant fee as well as student accounts. So don't go and try to create additional accounts there. So those are just some of my housekeeping things that I felt obligated to say. I'm sorry for kind of droning on about those. But just some FYIs there, don't kind of mess around over here with this great user. Um, and the rostering pieces here, do not get your hands dirty with that. That's a lot of our automated processing things. It can be a little messy. You may or may not see this licenses piece at the top as well. Um, that won't be of a whole lot of use to you either. That's just showing how many licenses we have left. So that's good for me to know and for our, our team to know if we need to order additional ones, if we have an uptick in enrollment. So I would not mess around with that either. So once you're signed in, your schools tab here and these other tabs, create, discover, data reports, and professional learning are the ones that are probably going to be the most helpful to you. Right here is where you can click in and see a specific school if you would like. All right. So while I said that it's not good and that you should not, should not create any teacher profiles or create any student profiles or edit any of the existing profiles that are here, you can edit classes that exist. And the benefit of this is that you can add co-teachers or team teachers to an existing class in HMH Ed. 
So that's really helpful if you know that there's any sharing of students or creative rostering that needs to be done. This is a lot more flexible than what we've had in the past with like McGraw-Hill and Wonders. So I'm just going to show you how you can do that really quickly here in a second, but I also want to draw your attention up here to some more of these different tabs that might be helpful to you in your role, and then I'll come back and show you how you can edit a class. So if I click Create, this is where you can build lesson plans, activities, and assessments um, to maybe share with other teachers in your building. You can make them public so they can share them with you or you can share them with other teachers as well. So that's really great if maybe you're working to support a teacher and they need some assistance. Discover is how you access all of the teacher materials. Now I will warn you, when this is set up, you have access to all of the grade level materials for um, ELA as well as science, all right? I have even more on here because I'm at the district level. So I see some secondary ones on here too. Um, so you'll have access to the elementary pieces here that you need in any of the gradebook materials. So to toggle to a different grade level, you can easily do that from this menu. All right, and here's where you can jump into these different learning chapters and modules. You can view by standards if you need to. Here's some of the different activities. Here's the teacher resources, the student resources, and any of the pre-made materials here that are available through this provider. So you have the same access level here that a teacher would have, but even more because you have every single grade level. All right, next one is data and reports. Now there's not a whole lot here because this is the start of school, but as students start to engage in the different assessments that are on this platform and there's data that compiles, you can view that here. Um, and you have options and what reports you can run for your building as well. Notice that you can also generate reports when you're on the My Schools page as well. You can generate them there into a spreadsheet file if that's what you prefer. Professional learning is where there are some just quick on the spot PD pieces that HMH has put together. Uh, there's new ones here. You can sort it down by maybe the preference that you like to have. I mean, even by the different topics or grade levels there. So some of these are live events that you tune into. Other ones are pre-recorded. So those are just some examples if you need some help, where to go. All right, so let's go back to my schools. So you can see some of these different pieces here. Now you shouldn't have to mess with preferences and roster either. There's again, some of the more district level settings that I've configured already. So I'm just gonna click on Clifty here as an example. All right, so this is where you could export some of those data pieces you could also gather in the data and report section. Um, don't mess with create user, like I said. You shouldn't have to mess with create class either because they've all been created. Um, and the only reason, I can actually think of a reason for you to create a class now that we have all of our teachers that can be easily added to another co-teacher's class. So no more crazy rostering like what we had to do with Wonders in the past. All right, so right now I have it filtered by the building, but I have it filtered by teachers first. These are all the teachers. Again, don't edit or delete those. What you'll probably wanna do is come over here to where it says classes. And classes is where you can add another teacher. So if you notice here, this is the exact same name for this grade level class in Power School, all right? So if you're not sure, you're thinking, okay, what's EL 103? If I pulled up Power School, I can see what class it corresponds to, all right? So there's a whole bunch of them listed here. And let's say that we need to add a co-teacher to another class, all right? So I'm just gonna keep going until I find the one that I need, all right? So whenever I find the class that I need, I'll click on the name of it. All right, I see all the students that are listed here. I shouldn't have to mess with any of those. I should never have to add students. But if I need to add another teacher, notice there's a space here that says team teachers. And the great thing about this platform is that you can add other teachers and they have the ability to create assignments for the students, which was not always the case in some of the other providers that we've had in the past. So to add another teacher here, I'm gonna click edit class. All right. And here's the lead teacher's name. And what I'm going to do is look for the other teacher's name. And it's only going to show teachers for that building, all right? So I can add another teacher's name if I need to. And I could have multiple teachers for the class. But for this example, I'm just gonna put one. And whenever I have done that, all the stuff is good to go there. I don't need to change anything else. I'll click save. 
tells me it's saved. And now if you notice here where it was once blank and it said team teachers, now the co-teacher is there. All right, and if I need to go and change that at any point in time, we'll just click edit class again and remove that teacher and save it and I'm good to go. All right, so I know a lot of you get questions at the start of the year related to that, so I thought it might be helpful to show you that as well. All right, so that is just an example there on how you can view some of the different class information, how you can add in a co-teacher if that's needed. So hopefully this has been helpful. If you have any questions or difficulties with accessing the platform and navigating it, please let me know and I'll do my best to help you out. Thank you.